Hey everyone, Mark from Top Homeowner again. And in this video, we're going to be upgrading an exhaust fan in our kid's bathroom to this model. This video is gonna walk you through that process step-by-step step to get the old exhaust fan uninstalled and install a brand new one. But first, one thing I absolutely want to avoid is installing this new exhaust fan only to find out that it's not gonna work for me for some reason. But typically you don't test exhaust fans until they're in place because they have to be hardwired in order to receive power and actually operate. But it dawned on me that I actually can test this first before I install it, and I'm gonna do it with this. So I got this replacement power cord that's used for replacing a damaged power cord on say an appliance. But what I've done is I've installed some Wago connectors on the end of this cable. So that way I can wire this up to a plug-in cord test it all out and have everything ready to go when I put it in the ceiling. And if you've never used a Wago connector before, it's really simple. You just have to flip up these levers and then insert the wires and then close the levers on the wires. And then you have a solid tight connection that's not going to wiggle loose or release. We'll do the same thing for the ground wire and last but not least, the hot wire. So now that this is connected, we can plug this into the wall and test it out. Then once you're satisfied the fan is going to work for you, you can go ahead and move forward with your project. And it kind of goes without saying, but if you do make a cord like this, be sure to disconnect it from the wall before undoing your connections. And before you get started with removal, be sure to cut power at the breaker. Now for this kind of cover, you just have to pull down on it and it's held in place by some springs. And then you just squeeze the spring on both sides and then you can remove it. Sometimes the exhaust fans have a light built into them and to remove those, you just have to pop off the light diffuser, unscrew the light bulb, then you can access a nut that's holding the exhaust fan cover in place. Once you remove that nut, you should be able to lower it down and unplug that cover and the light from the housing. We're gonna unplug this motor from the housing and then there should be some tabs holding this motor into the housing. So on this one, there's a couple tabs here and then there's a tab on this side so I think it's the one on this side that we need to push in. And let me pull down, push in and pull down at the same time. Now this has a tab that's stuck up that's preventing this from coming down. So I'm gonna bend this tab down so we can get this out of here. go Tilt it down and you can see there's those two tabs in the back and now the fan is out of the housing so this fan has had problems getting all the moisture out of this bathroom and as i'm trying to move this exhaust fan door uh it's stuck it's not moving at all so i have a feeling this fan wasn't doing anything in here uh, because this is jammed so this should help get rid of the moisture a lot better once we get the new fan in place now there's a couple different ways that these could be attached in the ceiling. One is it could be attached to a stud on the side. So they would have screws going into uh, between the housing and the stud itself or the joist, I should say. And the other way is these might have metal rails that are run between two different joists in the ceiling. Now, if you have that situation to where it's installed with two different metal bars going across between two joists, you could take a reciprocating tool or an oscillating tool and then cut through those from below or if you have access to the attic uh, and you can get above this, then you should be able to remove it from above. If it's attached to a stud, like in our case, then we should be able to take a pry bar and go between the housing unit and the joist and then pry it away in order to remove it. Now that's gonna be the case if this is installed with nails, if this is installed with screws, again, we're gonna have to cut those off either with a reciprocating saw or an oscillating tool. As you can see here, this is the top of the exhaust fan. This is the housing unit. And then here's the duct that's attached to it. You've got your uh, wiring that's going through this grommet here. And then all around this, you've got blown in insulation. Now, you might not have blown in insulation. It might just be normal insulation that's laid over the top of this. But if you do have blown in insulation like this stuff here, once you remove this fan or this housing unit for this exhaust fan from your ceiling, a lot of that's gonna fall down inside of your bathroom. So just be prepared for that. Um, you're not going to be able to put that all back in the same way once you get the new exhaust fan installed, uh, but you will be able to put some of it back in place. The only way you could put everything back in place once you replace this is if you have access again into the attic so you can cover this back up. So now while I'm up here, I do want to point out, I've noticed that they've installed this um, with quite a few fasteners. They've got a staple that they've installed here 
on this fin. They've also used, it looks like a nail and then also a bolt. And it looks like that's gonna be the same case on this side as well. Let me see here. Um, actually, it looks like it's a little bit better. No, it's not. <laughs> they used a staple and a nail and a bolt there as well. Get the staple out, looks like. So that was one thing that was holding it in. And yes, I realize this is the wrong type of a pry bar when it comes to home improvement work compared to automotive work. However, I thought this would be a good option to try and get these staples out, to fit it in between the staples. There's two. These bolts are gonna be a pain. I was gonna show you how to do this from below, but guys, this is crazy. So and instead of me fighting it, I'm just gonna do it from up here with a crowbar. Removing the fan in this manner from the attic space can be an easy way to damage the drywall. So if you're going to use this method, be sure to be careful. And honestly, it's probably best if you push up from below and then pry this away from the joist at the same time. Make sure you're using an upward motion to avoid putting pressure on the drywall. It's starting to separate. There we go. The bolts are coming loose from the fins. Try not to bust through the ceiling too at the same time, because that would make for a whole other video. Just really trying to work it to where these bolts bust through this housing. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go back down and show you what this is like to remove the rest of the way from below. All right, so before I pull this out all the way, I'm gonna take this connector out of here. Just gonna undo the wire nuts here. Pretty simple. We're going to push this wire back through this plastic grommet. Now, your grommet might be metal. If it's metal, then you'll need to loosen it up after you get this out of the hole. I'm going to get this wiring out of this grommet. It's going to force it back through this hole here. It's going to wiggle it back and forth. All right. There we go. This is still connected to the duct. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the duct and you can see here, this is why this flapper wasn't able to be opened. Instead of using HVAC tape around this duct work and connecting it to the uh, exhaust fan, they used a sheet metal screw. And so that was preventing this door from opening and closing, uh, it was just stuck closed basically. So this wasn't doing anything whatsoever other than using electricity. that you may either need to bend these tabs over to pull it out or cut out the ceiling opening a little bit more in order to remove this now you want to be careful if you cut the ceiling open anymore because you don't want to make it too big for your new fan so make sure wherever you're cutting it's not going to cause you problems later should be able to slip this out Go. So now let's remove this motor from the housing. Um, this should be fairly easy to come out. It's going to be in there a little bit differently than the other one that we removed, but basically you just need to make sure the sides are spread apart and you should be able to lift this straight out. Next what we'll do is we'll take this housing and we'll mark our ceiling. Now with this specific fan they do include a cardboard template that you can use to mark this. But I'm just going to use this housing to mark the outline of this opening. Try to make sure it's lined up with the existing opening. And then we're going to take a pencil and we're going to trace around the top of this bracket and mark out the lines that we need to cut. Now that this is marked, I'm going to take a keyhole saw and cut out the rest of the drywall. Try to make sure the blade is as straight up and down as possible. You don't want it to curve out or in. For this side, I'm just going to puncture this here, push it in, and get the rest of this out. It's also a good idea to make sure you're not cutting anything up top here as well like the electrical wires or the vent duct. 
just pushing with some gentle pressure upward and rocking it back and forth because I don't want this knife to break off the drywall that's on the ceiling. And then also, if you have any bolts or nails that are up here from the old housing, you want to be sure to remove those. All right, now I'm going to push away any of the other insulation that's on the top here. Now, I'm just going to test this housing to make sure this will fit up here. Now, the fins, we're going to do something with later. We're going to bend these over. But I just want to see if the hole is op the uh, opening is big enough the way we've cut it. We're going to install these flanges. Salt from the bottom and pull it up. Okay. And now since this is a retrofit installation, we're going to fold these ears down. If this was going to be installed in a new construction home or installed from the top inside the attic, then you can leave these the way they are. But since we are putting this in through the ceiling from below, we're just going to fold these over. For the wiring panel for the housing, sometimes you're able to reuse the cable clamp from the old unit that you remove. But in my case, I want to upgrade this to a regular connector instead of reusing that plastic one. Just know that they're not included in the box and you're going to have to pick these up from your hardware store as well before you start your installation process. So this is going to get installed in the ceiling this way because these fins are going to be up against our joist here. And then this is where the wiring goes into this housing. And so this is where this wiring panel goes goes in here like this, and then it's just attached with the screw here. I'm going to go ahead and install this cable connector, this cable grommet, inside of the wiring panel. So put this in here like this. Just take this ring and put it on this side. They do make a little tool for this, so where you can get a little bit more grip to tighten this. But typically, hand tighten is all you need. And that's set up. So the wire is going to come in through here and go into our housing. I'm going to go ahead and put this in place now. We're going to run our wires through here. And we're going to make sure our Romex cable is through. So we're going to tighten this clamp down over the Romex sheathing. Okay, so we don't want the bare wires to be there. We want to tighten down over that. So we're just going to pull that into where it's barely exposed here. Okay, we're going to tighten this clamp down so that way the wires don't back out. Another thing you might have to do is your wire <laughs> it's in the ceiling may not be long enough to reach. This is not going to reach because there's a staple here in the ceiling pulling this wire in place. So I'm going to have to remove this staple without damaging the wire. Take some pliers and remove the staple. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of grabbing and twisting until it loosens up. That should give us enough room to work with here. Put this up on the ceiling. And it looks like the hole's not quite big enough. So I'm on the sides here. So I'm going to have to trim this up just a little bit more. With these little nubs on the side here that it's not wide enough uh, for this to be able to go in. So I'm just going to take a utility blade kind of eyeball it. I don't want to use my keyhole saw on this because there's not a lot of material that I need to remove. I just need to notch this out a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna screw this into our joist here. In this unit here, there are three little dimples and that's where the screws go to attach this to the joist. I'm just going to take a impact drill here and then just screw it in. It says that the third screw is optional and since this is so tight inside of the drywall anyway, I'm just going to leave it with two. Okay, now I'm going to make the electrical connections. Now, uh, one thing I like to use instead of wire nuts are these Wago connectors. These are also called lever nuts. And basically what you do is you just have to open up these levers 
and insert one of the wires and close it. And then to make the other connection, all I have to do is put this in and close it and that wire connection is made. So now just remember if you're gonna use lever nuts or regular wire nuts, black to black, white to white, and ground to ground. And in this case, this is an exposed copper wire uh, and the one that comes with this kit is green, but those are the two you wanna to connect together. Now the white wires, there's actually three of them. So I'm gonna use a three port lever nut for this. Okay, now our wiring connections are made. Now we get to put this cover in place. Just slides in from the bottom underneath these little tabs. And then we'll put a screw here so this doesn't fall back down. Now we'll take our ventilation duct and pull it through this hole so we can make that connection. So there's a slight issue with the fact that we've replaced a lower flow or lower efficiency fan with one that's more high efficiency. The reason that's a problem is because this is a three inch duct and this fan comes with a four inch duct adapter. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to step this down with this adapter here. So this is gonna be able to fit inside of this three inch pipe here, or this three inch uh, HVAC duct. And then we're gonna be able to put this on here, we're gonna tape it, and then we're gonna be able to make this connection, put this onto our four inch exhaust, and then put this in place. The other issue is this is the only one I could find in my area, and this is rated two stars out of five stars. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend going with this one, but uh, this is the only one I could get a hold of. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so first, we're going to see if this will fit inside of this duct. And it looks like it will. Some of the reviews are saying that the size of this, it doesn't really fit anything. Uh, but obviously it fits in this, so that's good. And in addition to putting this on here to make sure it doesn't come off, we're going to use some sure tape. This is some actual uh, duct tape, not duct tape, but tape that's designed to hold duct work in place. All right. So I'm just going to put this tape on here. Wrap it around. I'm not sure how old this stuff is. This is probably, uh, I'm going to say at least 10 years old, maybe older than that. So be why it's coming off the roll funky. All right, so just make sure that's all on there and it's good. Now we can connect this to the one that came with the fan. So hopefully this will just slide right on here. And nope. So this is, looks like it's the exact same diameter, which is probably why this gets a two star rating. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape all around the outside of this and uh, we'll just call it done. You wanna make sure so this is facing the right way. So it says up fan side. So it needs to go in the housing this way. Make sure there's no dust on this as best as you can. And we're gonna line this up. And we're gonna put this on. And we're gonna start wrapping it around. Now we can feed this back in. Just make sure this plastic is on the inside where these two tabs are. And then we'll just rock this in place and then we'll install a screw here. Okay, and now we're going to take the fan and we're going to line this up with that exhaust port. And we're going to stick this up in here. This should kind of rest in place once we get it inside because of these plastic mounts here. Make sure the wires aren't in the way. There we go. All right, so this popped into place on this side and this side, so this is in. Now we can install the screws. And we'll want to take this plug and unhook it from this fan and plug it into the electrical connection. 
Next, we're going to plug in our light. Make sure it's plugged in all the way. And then we're going to take our springs, compress, and we're going to hook it in here. And do the same for this side. So these don't hook into a metal bracket. They use the plastic that's a part of the blower motor. And don't forget to put back the insulation that you removed once you reach this step, especially if you have attic access. Now we're not quite done yet. Since this unit uses a wireless remote instead of a typical switch, we're gonna to have to go and install this over at the wall. And as always, we wanna to check to make sure the power is off before we grab these switches and pull them out. We get shocked, which should not be fun. What I've done is I've taken the wires that were to this light switch and I just twisted them together and I put a wire nut on it so that way that fan has constant power. I thought I recorded that part, but it turns out my camera was off, so I didn't capture that. Sorry about that. Uh, so next, with this other switch, this powers the light that's above the vanity. So instead of keeping a normal switch in place here and then having it next to this new fancy switch uh, for the fan, this wireless switch for the fan, then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install a paddle switch next to it so that way it looks nice and it matches. Now since this paddle switch uses a back wire method, it's got this clamp on the back here, I'm just going to leave these wires straight and then stick it underneath this clamp to make the connection instead of making a J-hook. And this is the top. So Make sure you feed this underneath the clamp if you're going to use this method. You also want to make sure there's no insulation underneath this clamp either, otherwise it could be an intermittent connection. Now we're going to install ground wire. And then we're going to screw this into the box. So now, for this switch, we're going to pop this out of this cover. We're going to remove this back plate here. And then we're just simply going to screw this in. I've already put the batteries in this. Uh, let me show you what that looks like here. You just have to pop this off. These batteries are supposed to last about two to three years without having to replace them. So that should be fine. And that's the two AAA batteries right in here. So this just pops in and then we'll screw this in place. And I've got this premium two gang wall plate where it doesn't show screws. So we'll install this, pop the cover off of this. Now these do have an orientation, so make sure where it says top, make sure it's lined up at the top. And I'm gonna line these up before I tighten these switches down all the way to make sure these all fit together. And it looks like that's pretty good. Screw this plate on. You can also see with this plate, they make it where you can access the other screws behind it. So we're gonna tighten these down now since everything's lined up. And then we'll check our orientation on this and then Put this on top. All right, now we can go turn our power back on. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and also check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll like it too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.